Jim Laird here for War Performance and Health Collide and j and Strength and Conditioning. Got an interesting uh, question from Stephen today um, via email. And Stephen was asking if I had seen the Mark Bell uh, YouTube post about uh, why fatties can't do carb backloading. Um, and he's like, how can you um, say that you use the principles of carb backloading with Eric Banks, you know, and so on and so on. Um, yes, I did see the post by Mark Bell, and it was excellent. Mark did a great job um, summarizing everything very well, actually. I agreed with everything he said. Here's the deal. <clears throat> Kiefer, in his book, Carb Backloading, teaches you how the human body works, and it's your job to learn what works for you and how to manipulate it. He's going to teach you how to get leaner. He's going to teach you how to get more jacked. He's going to teach you basically how to manipulate things. And I'll lay out what we did with Eric. Um, when Eric came to me, he was well over 300 pounds. He just basically was out of breath just walking around. We had five weeks to get him in shape for his show, for his reality show. I can't even remember. It was several years ago. I can't even remember the name of it. So the first thing we did is we figured out that, uh, and, and once again, I took the principles from the book and applied it to Eric's situation, okay? Eric basically was very busy. He didn't have a lot of time to eat. He would eat fast food. He would just stop it at McDonald's or do whatever. So the first thing we had to do was figure out what worked best for Eric's schedule. What worked best for Eric's schedule was eating all his food at night. So we had him eat light during the day. He maybe had a shake. Uh, uh, he would have uh, you know, coffee with some cream, uh, as outlined you know, Kiefer, Kiefer's really big on that. Uh, he would have some nuts. He would eat light during the day. And then at night, he would eat all his food. Well, for the first three to four, three or about three weeks, we basically kept it paleo. We pulled all the bread, all the dairy out, because that's where most people don't handle that well. And he just dropped fat like crazy. In the first three weeks, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it was insane. He ended up losing almost 50 or 60 pounds of fat in the first five weeks. And when you first start working with somebody who is, is obese and pre-diabetic, or Derek might, uh, Eric might have been on the verge of diabetic at the time. I, uh, I'd have to ask him about that, but he, he was basically metabolically drained. That's what it's called. You want to pull all the carbs out. And so after about three or four weeks, everything started to work better. He was getting some of that fat off. He was training pretty hard three days a week and walking every day to get ready for the show because of the challenge show, he has to... Um, he, we don't know what he's going to have to do. I mean, he could have to run a mile. He could have to climb a mountain. I mean, it, you don't know. So we're doing some, some various different things to get him ready for that. And so we started introducing a little bit of carbs two to three days a week. And he just, the fat just started flying off him. In the last two weeks, he made some really amazing progress. And that's what worked for Eric, okay? He didn't, it wasn't a boatload of carbs. It was maybe a sweet potato um, but mostly it was meat and veggies, and we still kept it very paleo because he just doesn't do well with bread, he doesn't do well with dairy. And then as the, over months and months, we allowed him to throw some french fries in there or whatever, or whatever he wanted to eat. So when you're obese, when you have a lot of weight to lose, you can't be eating pizza and stuff like that. But once you get lean, you can throw that in every once in a while, as Kiefer outlines in his book, and you might even get leaner if you're training properly. But the majority of your diet is not going to be pizza and cherry turnovers and all that kind of stuff. That's something you can throw in from time to time. Okay? So I hope that clears that up for you. You take the principles from the book and then you apply them. Okay? Um, if you're obese, you definitely need to be pulling carbs out of your diet. Okay? And then you need to put them back in accordingly where needed. And then some people don't handle them really well. Some people do better on carb night like Mark Bell does. I do better um, depending on how I'm training. It, it all depends on what's going on with me. But I, I, I handle carbs fairly well. But I can definitely tell when I'm sliding a little bit, I, I'm not as lean. So I have to adjust things accordingly as well. It's definitely not a free-for-all every time I carb load. And when I stick to things like sweet potato and things like that, I feel a lot better. So hopefully that clears that up for you. Mark's post on that was, was great. And uh, it's all about picking the right tool at the right time. And it's training and, and food. And food is a tool. And the, one of the biggest things for Eric was sleep. His sleep was so messed up 
when we first uh, started working together, getting him to sleep and to rest and to walk outside. I mean, if you do those things, if you eat good food and you, and you get moving, I mean, your body can, can, can do some amazing things. Uh, the second question is from Sam, and it's on my blog, actually, and he, he was asking, you know, what's the big deal about this HRV thing you keep talking about, and, you know, why are you so high on it? And uh, HRV, first of all, it's the, uh, the difference in between, the hundreds of a second in between your heart rate, the variability in your heart rate. And they basically can, can measure that with, with, I use Joel Jameson's app, they can measure that, and from that number, they can kind of figure out where you are nervous system-wise, if your nervous system is recovered, where it's at, and we can track that. You can do that with other things such as vertical jump, you can do it with grip strength, you can do it with space bar test. Uh, those work just fine as well. The cool thing about this is it pulls it, puts it right on the phone, and then it gives you a recommendation whether you can go green, orange, or red. And so the, you have a couple of my athletes use it. Uh, a couple of my clients use it, and I get to see, you know, eventually Joel will have it integrated where I get to see their chart and all that good stuff on the computer. <clears throat> so I get a number. We can also get, you know, it plots it on a graph so we can see if they're on a downward trend, an upward trend. If they're on a downward trend, then we can either evaluate their training. Usually it's lifestyle. Usually somebody's like got some major stress or something's going on. So we need to either back training off or we need to improve the nutrition or get massages. or So we can kind of see. It's I think... We could do the space bar stuff, the vertical jump test stuff, but I think when people see that red light and they're like, oh, wow, I stayed up two nights in a row and I went out and did this, uh, and then we backed their training off for that day, they're not as resistant to it. And I think they kind of do a, I do a better job taking care of myself when I take my HRV all the time and I see where I'm at. Because I'm like, wow, you know, I look at that. Uh, I haven't recovered well, um, so I need to do a better job of getting myself in bed. And when I see that downward trend for over several weeks, I'm like, man, I really need to make sleep a better priority, need meditation a better priority. And these are all things that you should do anyways, but I'm kind of stubborn and I, I'm, I'm really, it's easy for me to fall into that habit of turn the music up and go. Because a lot of the athletes I train, <clears throat> you know, when it comes time to test and things like that, they'll get after it. And even if they're tired, they'll still push through and they'll, They'll, they'll hit a PR. So I think a lot of times numbers and PRs aren't a really good indicator if someone's really recovered and where they're at. So because, you know, when you get in a competition type environment, people are able to drive through that. But when you can see that, that number, you know, when you see yourself drop from like an 80, which is where I am usually about 80 score with about, I wake up in the morning, I have about a 50 to 55 resting heart rate. When I take it first thing in the morning and I'm at 63, 65, and all of a sudden I'm down at 50, and I'm not going to make some changes in what I've been doing, you know. Or it also is a good way to see if you're training hard enough because obviously you need that stimulus. You need that um, stressor so your body can respond. It's just a lot of information. And if you don't want to get it, great. But I think for me it works great. I think it, the, really the, the, the biggest uh, application for it is going to be group training. Uh, I know Molly Galbraith, myself, Rob, uh, Mike Robertson, and Rob Wolf. We're coming out, and Joel's doing a, a write-up for it as well. We're coming out with a group training product uh, for coaches in the beginning of November. <clears throat> and Joel's app, you know, information about his app and how you can use that in a group setting is going to be essential because, you you know, it's very hard to adjust the workout according to, uh, to individualize it because some people can handle more volume than others. Some people need less volume. So, you know, the person has an orange or a red, they're working different than the person with the green they're gonna their workout's gonna be more intense so it allows you to see what the body needs to get better if you need a rest day to get better that you see your body can adapt awesome if you're green and you need to be pushed perfect it just gives you more information so it is what it is if you want to try it great if not i like it it doesn't mean it's the end all be all if i like it but it works for me i've seen some great results with it the people that i train that use it um, have gotten some really good results because it's just a great accountability tool. They seem to take their recovery more serious uh, when they're taking that HRV every day. And, you know, it, they're just like, well, I'm going to get myself in bed earlier. I'm going to take better care of myself. And they see the results on the screen. And I think when you see that result, I think it's, uh, I think it's, much, much, it's much easier for most people. So I'm going to go finish my workout here, and I hope, you, uh, hope you're having a good day. And please feel free to 
post more questions. Thank you.